Hello everyone, we're live with Dr. Ron. We're going to be talking about why the American obsession with cutting out fat has led to a rise in diabetes, obesity, and waistlines. So for those of you watching this on replay, thank you for watching the replay. But you're more than welcome to join me live by clicking the top right on the uh, right, right area in the, um, in the video. And there's says live notifications. If you click that, you can follow me on live notifications. So you can join me um, on this discussion. So we're going to get started. So over the last, uh, I don't know how long, many, many decades, there's been an obsession about cutting out fat in people's diets so that they don't become fat. Well, the big problem with that is that uh, that sort of theology is a, is a little um, impaired, and I'll tell you why. So, <clears throat> how, why, why am I even talking about this? Um, there's a lot of my patients who come into the office and say, Doc, I'm trying to lose weight. I've cut out red meat, okay, and I've cut all the fat out of my diet. But I can't seem to lose a pound. I was like, well, okay, well, have you cut out any sugar, any carbohydrates, um, anything like that? And it's like, no, Doc. Um, you know, I eat cereal, I eat whole wheat bread um, and whole grain, and, um, and I'm just trying to lose some fat, and it's really hard to do. I was like, well, you know, we have to think about the idea of losing fat as um, something that is not going to um, hurt you. So if you cut out a lot of the a lot of the fats in your diet, you have a one big problem is that you're not dealing with the insulin surge. And what insulin surge is that as you consume carbohydrates, it gets turned into sugar. Um, the sugar allows the release of uh, insulin from the pancreas, and that insulin uh, will start your fat storage mechanism in your body. Number one. Number two, when you deprive yourself of fat. Um, you're also depriving yourself of some essential fatty acids that may be needed um, in order for you to function and do and do well. Um, but it's all about eating the good fats, right? Um, the the American obsession with cutting out fat is 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 really in in the, in the marketing area, right? So there's a lot of things that's as low fat um, or half the amount of fat as regular milk or um, anything like that. And that is that it's it's unfortunate because what happens is that a lot of times they replace the fats with either carbohydrates or worse they replace the fats with sugar substitutes that are so highly addictive that when that people continue to to eat more of these items and um, their waistline gets bigger well you know, but that really started with a food pyramid, right? The food pyramid back in the 80s um, had this triangle where the bottom you're supposed to have um, six to 11 servings of a carbohydrate as your foundation in the pyramid. And at the very top, you have the fat. It says eat sparingly at the very top of the food pyramid. That food pyramid existed for many decades. It wasn't until recently that uh, it was debunked. And so, the food pyramid, uh, the classic food pyramid has, it should have really been reversed. Um, you should have your fruits and vegetables at the bottom, and then your proteins and fats, and then maybe eat sparingly those um, carbohydrates it should be maybe at the top. And when I say carbohydrates, I want to get one thing clear. Um, these carbohydrates are wheat-based carbohydrates, uh, not necessarily fruits, because fruits and vegetables are also carbohydrates. They're the carbohydrates that are the best for you, and they're really important for you to, to eat. Um, but but uh, the, the, um, the grain-based or wheat-based or barley-based carbohydrates, those should be at the top. But if you remember the food pyramid, um, the food pyramid that I remember as a kid is that at the bottom, you have these six to eleven uh, servings of carbohydrates. You have all these bread items in there, right? You have the pictures of of loaves of bread and and this wheat and all the stuff in there. Well, that's led really to a huge rise, a huge rise in uh, diabetes, type two diabetes, and pre diabetes, and metabolic syndrome, and obesity, and and waistlines, because it's just not the way that hormonally our body works we've got to eat for our hormones 
And in order to do that, you got to you got to eat fat to lose fat and cut out a lot of the wheat-based carbohydrates. And so why is it that the carbohydrates in, in, in the wheat form are worse for you than any other carbohydrates like fruits and vegetables, right? Isn't a carb a carb? Well, no, it's not. Because if you have carbohydrates in fruits and vegetable form, along with it comes fiber. And if you, have, if you intake that fiber along with the carbohydrates in that whole food, for example, an apple, okay, that's actually good for you. All right, it doesn't have a, a significant insulin spike in your body, which means that your fat storing mechanism won't be turned on as much. Um, but where, but if you also if you eat uh, these wheat-based carbohydrates, the problem is 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 not only is it just the carbohydrates, a lot of people are sensitive to wheat and develop an uh, inflammatory reaction towards wheat. Um, and towards um, many other types of carbohydrate grains, not just wheat. Um, so, so there's wheat, there's corn, there's rice. People develop different reactions towards these, right? And then I'm not just talking about the insulin spike. I'm talking about an actual reaction causing inflammation in the gut. A simple concept called leaky gut syndrome where it's you it, the things that you eat changes the the architecture of your gut and it changes the normal bacteria that lives in the gut that's supposed to help you that's supposed to help you with with weight loss it's supposed to help you with digestion it's supposed to help you with absorption so what has really risen from this obsession with fat loss is that people become malnourished people who are obese and people who um who on the way to obesity by not eating right they're actually very malnourished and it's a little bit a little bit of opposite what you think you know why are people obese and malnourished but they're malnourished from the actual good nutrients the essential fatty acids the vitamins that they actually need for the body to function and for the metabolism to continue so the concept of of, of eating fat to lose fat uh, maybe a little bit of a, a foreign thing for most people, but you know, but in the end, that's that's the truth. But when we talk about fats, let's talk about what fats are actually good for you. If you look at omega three fatty acids, okay, the ones that are in fish that are in the, in the from the Arctic Circle, um, wild caught, not farm raised. If you look at omega threes and and um, these these fatty acids are anti inflammatory as well. So if they're anti-inflammatory, which means that for our bodies, if they reduce the amount of inflammation, um, they reduce the amount of damage to our bodies too. So that's, that's why omega-3s are important. And then if you look at a lot of plant-based fats, well, they're, um, they also do very similar things. And if you look at cholesterol, cholesterol is also a fat. And um, there's an obsession of in America about high cholesterol causing heart attack and strokes but in actuality most people who have heart attack and strokes have very normal cholesterol but I will talk about that in another video but if you look at these fats that we actually eat um, a lot of a lot of people assume that these fats go straight to our hips or straight to our butt or straight to our coronaries or straight to our vessels in the brain and that has not been shown to be true. It just has not been shown to be true. Um, it has to do with our hormone levels. It has to do with the rise in insulin as we consume carbohydrates, the wheat-based carbohydrates. It has to do with how our body starts storing fat as our insulin levels become higher. So it has a lot to do with uh, the, the way that we, um, the way that our hormones work. So. You know, I challenge you to uh, eat for your hormones. Don't eat uh, for what's necessarily um, a low-fat diet. But go ahead, um, eat some fat. Eat some healthy fats, okay? Your olive oils, your, your, um, your salmon, your avocados. Eat some healthy fats. That's okay. That's purely okay. If you want butter, eat some grass-fed butter. You know, I, I love my butter. <laughs> um, but... Uh, also understand that 
you got to res be responsible on the carbohydrate part. If you want to eat par carbs, eat the good carbs. Vegetables. Vegetables are carbohydrates. Um, eat your fruits, your whole fruits. As long as the, f as the food is a whole food from nature, you got to consume it, right? And so stop obsessing with the fat and um, stop obsessing with low-fat products like Low fat milk or skim milk or 1% or 2%, go with the whole. You need those fats in that milk to absorb the vitamin, vitamin D that's naturally in the milk, right? Um, but don't buy low fat or fat free yogurt. That's one of the worst things for you because they replace that, they replace the fat in there with uh, something a little more toxic, uh, which are sugar substitutes. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of items that are out there really on the market, but you really have to pay attention to exactly what you're putting into your body. Are you putting carbohydrates into, into your body from this fat-free item? Are you putting sugar substitutes in, the, in your body from this fat-free item? If you are, avoid it, okay? Well, thanks a lot. I will talk to you guys later. Share this information if you enjoy it. If you don't, well, share it anyways. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, hope you guys have a great day.